In this video, we'll go through how to factor by finding the greatest common factor. Simplifying means distributing the 2 into the bracket. So what we're left with here is a 2 times 3x squared, which is 6x squared, plus a 2y minus a 12z. Now factoring is actually going the other way. So we'll start out with, and we're left with 2 bracket 3x squared plus y minus 6z. What I want you to realize is simplifying is very similar to multiplying. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 is a simplified version of the 2 times 6. Now factoring is going the other way meaning can we break up 12 into its factors? So for example, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Or can we break up 12 into its product of primes? So we can break 12 into 2 times 6, 2 times 3. So 12 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 3, the product of primes. We've essentially factored the number 12. So here we have a question, and if we're asked to factor, our goal is to find the greatest common factor to take out. We're starting with two terms, so we should end up with two terms inside the brackets. Now, you may think that a 2 is a common factor, you're right, or a 3. But the 6 is the best choice. It's the greatest common factor, often called GCF. So take out the 6 and we're left with 2x plus a 3. If you were asked to simplify 6 times 2x plus 3, you would expand or multiply and get 12x plus 18. So essentially we're working with inverse operations here. When finding the greatest common factor, it's important to realize how many terms you have in the expression, because your final answer will also have that many terms. Now let's look at each individual term. What's common? We have a 7 that's a common factor, and we also have an x. What you're thinking then is 14x squared divided by 7x which is 2x. Negative x squared. Positive 3y. And finally, negative 1. As a check, you could perform a distribute to see if you get the original. The highest common factor, or the greatest common factor, would be a 6 pi y squared. Dividing that out, we have 48 divided by 6 which is 8. Pi squared divided by pi is pi. And y cubed divided by y squared is a y. Minus 6 divided by 6 is 1. Pi divided by pi is 1. And y to the 6 divided by y squared is y to the 4. Remember, we subtract exponents. Plus 12 divided by 6 is 2 pi divided by pi is 1, and y squared divided by y squared is 1, minus 3, pi divided by pi is 1, and y cubed divided by y squared is a y. Now we check, and we have 48 pi squared y cubed minus 6 pi y to the 6 plus 12 pi y squared minus 18 pi 
y cubed. So we're right. Now these last two examples look a little bit different, but apply the same principle. We've got two terms, so our answer will have two terms. If we divide out a 2 here, we could cancel off these 2's and be left with x plus y. Now if we divide the second term by 2, we get the same result. 2 divided by 2 is 1. However, the inside is a minus b. Now the sign in between is a plus, and we're left with this expression. Can we do a check? We have 2 times this chunk plus 2 times this chunk does in fact give us the original. Same idea for the second one. We have two terms. Is there anything common in both of these terms? And the answer is yes. We have an a plus b that's common. Now we divide out and get 3x minus 4. We know we'll be left with two terms, and dividing out an a plus b, we're left with 3x minus 4. A quick check, we have a plus b times 3x, yes, and a plus b times negative 4, yes. So we know we're right. Now what would happen if you decided to only take out a common factor of 5? You'd be left with 10y squared plus 15xy plus 5y. Then you'd realize that each of these three terms still have a common factor. Keep the 5, take out another 5, but also a y Finally, 25y, bracket 2y, plus 3x, plus 1. Let's check. 50y squared, plus 75xy, plus 25y. 